Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. As we said before, we're on an intentional course. And as we get closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the warfare will intensify, just like labor pains. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about when you are personally under spiritual attack. You have to know for sure, and you will know for sure when you're under physical attack, whether or not God is in control. And we're going to talk about the, the sovereignty and that God is in control. Once you have submitted your your uh, life and your will and your um, uh, the keeping of your soul to God, God comes in and God makes his abode. And we're going to find that that's what's going to be happening now. When Jesus was on the earth, you saw many examples of people where the adversary had taken control of them. And uh, God will take control, too, of your life when you ask him to come into your life. When you ask him, when you, when you, uh, you uh, the scripture says he stands at the door and knock and any man hear his voice and open the door, he will come in and, and uh, make his abode and sup with him. So you're going to find a lot of, of people being possessed because they have opened up the door. But when you submit yourself to God, God is in control and not even um, to be a concern about people who are, have opened themselves over to uh, up to demonic possession or influence. Even that God is in control of that person. They, they can't, they won't override you. They won't um, dominate you. It's only when you yourself have given that access to the adversary where the enemy will come in. But once you accept Jesus Christ, thank you, Jesus, and you uh, begin to de declare over your life that Jesus is your Lord and plead the blood over your life, then it, God will clean the house. Thank you, Jesus. He will sweep the house. He will, it, it, uh, he will um, uh, uh, expel or cast them demons out. And it because of a lot of times because of things we've been taking part in, the enemy will come in to people's lives. And sometimes they don't even realize that they have opened up the door for a uh, demonic um, position. But I thank God that God is still in control, even of the demons, even of, of the principalities, even of, of, of the uh, rulers of darkness. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Christ. He's the anointed one. Thank you, Jesus. He is the son of the morning. He is the son of the morning. He is, he is the one that comes with the healing in his wings. He is the one. Christ Jesus is the Lord. He is the Lord over everything, even over the, the, the powers and rulers. Jesus is over them because the scripture said when he rose, he rose with all power. All power is subject to him. And so when you find yourself in spiritual warfare, you have to know for sure that you have submitted the keeping of your soul unto the Lord. And and whatever state you're in, you see a lot of time people say they were dealing with witchcraft. They were dealing with things. But it's your soul that you have to make sure that Christ is inside of you. You have to make you have a will. And say, Lord, I give my will to you. I have given my will in time past to, to other things, but I'm asking you to take control of me. Take control. And that's what we're talking about, God in him control. Okay, we're going to pray. Oh, we're going to sing and then we're going to pray. Oh, maybe we'll pray first. Father, we thank and praise you that you are in control. You are the uh, uh, almighty. You are the alpha and omega. You are the omnipresent, all present. Oh, God, powerful, all present, and all knowing. There is nothing that is past you. Nothing is surprises you. We thank and praise you that our lives, oh God, because of the blood of Christ, are now purchased with the blood of Jesus. And I thank and praise you that we're no longer our own, for we confess that you are our Lord and our Savior as we yield our body, soul, and spirit unto you. It's in Jesus' name we pray as we go into this lesson. We thank you for an ear to hear and a heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And um, you're going to find out personally that you will be going through warfare because of the word control. But God reminded me, um, after sitting with, uh, sitting and seeing um, so much enemy influence, God began to say to me the word control, that he's in control. Uh, even when it came down to Job being tested or tempted, uh, well, tested because Job went through. 
he the enemy the devil had to get permission from God so God sits on the throne of heaven he sits and rules over everything yes and the reason that you see certain things where the enemy is uh, uh, is evident is because the door or it could be sometimes before as we see in the scripture where the man's son was being thrust thrown into fires and he took those his son to the disciples and the disciples couldn't cast him out and they asked um the father how long had he been in there and jesus uh asked the man that and the man says been there since he was a child so sometimes parents can open up access to their children because of their behavior and you see a lot of times the enemy say he's been in there since they were born and but the thank i thank god because god still is in control of the soul once the soul decides thank you jesus that they want to receive christ even if they grew up in um demonic uh, um influence or witchcraft or whatever god is still there and he still hears that soul and so we're going to talk about that today and um it says in proverbs you're going to read a couple of scriptures and as i said i sat down and i was thinking and talking to someone that I felt they had uh, the enemy had serious uh, influence over, but the Lord began to tell me that uh, He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so we're going to look at that scripture too. And we're going to see in the warfare, since it's not carnal, you're not fighting against flesh and blood. You don't have to go get uh, uh, guns and knives and stuff. But what you have to do is be clothed in Christ. Let God be in you. Thank you, Jesus. When God is in you, then you have the victory. And when you stand firm and don't cast away your confidence, the Lord told me so many times that I was fighting a uh, spiritual warfare. He said, cast not away your confidence. Don't, don't, don't have this because fear is not from God. So when you feel fearful, do you know that's not, that's the enemy trying to come in. That's one of his tech, tech, uh, uh, tactics. Uh, in fact, even in the world, so many people are fearful and they're being told, if you don't do this, that's going to happen to you. If you don't do this, that's going to happen to you. And then they open themselves up actually for the enemy to come in because of the uh, threat of if you don't comply to what I'm saying, then this is going to happen to you. But you got to know who is in control and God is in control. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, um, a man's heart devises his way. But the Lord directs his step. That means any man. Hallelujah. It tells us in Amos 3 and 6, um, shall a, a, a trumpet be blown into a city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord has not done it? So with it, in other words, God will allow um, the wicked to receive the wickedness i mean if you're sowing wickedness you're gonna get wickedness so he would allow it it says uh, and sometimes when a nation or a person has moved to the point where they um have rejected the truth rejected god then god would allow the enemy to come in and test them god would allow the enemy to come in and invade their lives and and they will understand clearly because you see throughout the scripture they have moved away from god and so um God tells us, and if people say, well, why does God do this? And that's what Isaiah um, 55 tells us, that God's thoughts are not like our thoughts. You might say, well, God, if you know the enemy is overtaking me, it's just like if you say the enemy as being a rod or a chastisement or a person to uh, spank you, uh, then you would see why God would say, okay, well, since you want to uh, – take part in this maybe i'll let you go a little bit further than you think you want to go with this uh course and then at that time when you see how dangerous it is then you will turn uh isaiah 55 8 and 9 now you would say well once you see the enemy coming lord can't you just go there and tell him to get away but some part of it is because your own behavior or as i say with the child the parent or something has happened that you the door has been opened and God knows every single situation. He is in control. 
and some things he allowed. And it says in Isaiah 55 and 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that means that when God allows something, God has a purpose and a plan for that situation. Um, and then we're going to go to uh, John to talk about asking God to come into your own life. How important it is to, to make your own um, decision to allow God to come in to you, to come in and make his abode in you. All of this happens because the warfare is going to intensify. And it's not enough to say, well, I know about God. The Bible said the demons know about God and they tremble. They When Jesus was coming in, they said, you come to torment us before our time? They know about him too. So knowing about him is not enough. Thank you, Jesus, to know because it said the demons know. So you got to not only know, but you got to let him come in. Uh, it said, let him in, let him in, um, um, and let him be Lord over your life. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that's what we, we're summing up this lesson with is the control. You're going to see a lot of people who have said, I know about God. I know a little bit about God, but that's not enough. God got to be in control and you have to allow him to come into your heart, come into your mind, come into your soul. Um, John, the 14th chapter, verses 23. Um, uh, let's start it. Uh, the promise of the spirit at the 16th verse, and then we'll go down to verse 23. Um, and then we go uh, down to 27. Then we're going to close out this particular text. It says, I, and I will pray the father and he will give you another comfort that, that he may abide, abide with you. That means the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's why this, when we say great is he that's in me, because the spirit of God now is abiding inside of you. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Hallelujah. So this, since they don't see the Holy Spirit and don't know him, that means they don't know God. And how do we get to know God? We get to know God when the word is preached. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without a preaching? How can they preach except he be sent? That's how the, you get to know God. You get you move in from un, for not knowing God, from hearing the preaching of the gospel. But when you find that you don't want to hear any preaching, you don't want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how God chose. The, he chose the preaching of the gospel whereby men might be saved. But when you said, well, I don't want to hear that, then you're still in darkness. And therefore, you are subject to demonic um, oppression, possession. Uh, influence. Okay, but let's go back to um, John. It says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth not him not. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. Jesus telling his disciples, I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Thank you, Jesus. He that hath my, my commandments and keepeth them. Thank you. What time is it? Okay, it's five o'clock. Okay. So my husband's making breakfast. And keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said to him, not Iscariot now. Lord, how is it thou shalt manifest thyself to us and will, um, will manifest thyself to us and not to the world? How would Jesus make his presence known to us and not to the world? Um, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we, means him and the Father, will come unto him and make our abode in him. Uh, he that loveth me not, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give I unto you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So you see here in this scripture, it says, I and my father will come and make his our abode in you. So you talk about control. God is in control when you let him be the Lord over your life. So many other people you see under demonic control because they've been let the enemy come in. That we can pray for their salvation. We can pray, as the scripture says, that God, that when they hear the gospel, Perhaps God will give them uh, uh, the ability to repent and, and be released from the grips of that darkness. Hallelujah. But we ourselves who are conscious of the word of God and hear the word of God, we have the power of God within us. And so we want to close with that, that God will make his abode and that God is in control. God is in control of everything on the earth. The earth is God. And the reason he, as you see in Isaiah, he allows certain people to be um, under demonic influences because they have given themselves over to that. Uh, it could be a, a, um, addictions. It could be any kind of addictions. You just have no control over it. But once God comes in and makes his abode, he cleanses you and he delivers you and he sets you free from these uh, um, oppressions, possessions and all these things. But it, then you begin to feast on God's word, begin to um, ask God to, to, con to confess your faults, number one. And he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So when we begin to confess, well, I have an addiction. I have an obsessive behavior. I have uh, I took part in Ouija boards and, 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 and uh, horoscopes and all this. And Lord, please forgive me. I took part in sexual acts that was not correct. Then I uh, forgive me, Lord, cleanse me. And the Bible says, if we confess our faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. So we're looking for cleansing if you're in that position right now. And if not, if you have not received Christ, ask him to come in and make his abode in you. Because God is in, this is a time and a season where people are being taken control over. The enemy is letting you know what vessels he has and God is letting you know what vessels he has. One that God is controlled. And even if you find yourself where you're being influenced very much by the adversary, ask God to come in and take control. Okay? In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you that you are the almighty God. You are the one that reign over everything, Lord God. And we thank and praise you as Isaiah, your thoughts concerning us, O oh God. And we thank you for Jeremiah 29, 11, your thoughts concerning us of peace and not of evil to bring us to an expected end. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I thank and praise you for making you abode in us, God. Thank and praise you, Lord God. Have your way. We thank you for giving us the victory and the victory is through Christ, through the blood of Christ, where we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. And I thank and praise you, Lord God, that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. And God is exalted for we commit ourselves into your hand. It's in Jesus name. We pray and count it done. Amen. 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 So we're giving God the glory. Last night I had a dream, but in the, in the dream, uh, the enemy was coming after me, but the Lord began to tell me in the dream, just continue to plead the blood. And it's like the enemy just came straight to my face. But I thank God that he gave me the victory through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because it's when you have submitted yourself to God, he's the keeper of your soul. He's the keeper of your soul. He's the one that has gives you victory, and that victory is in Christ. Okay, so it's the warfare, and listen, this is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Okay, uh, Ephesians talking about putting on the whole armor, and the first thing is the helmet of salvation. Okay. This and no, we in warfare, but we already have the victory, even by our faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so be blessed. I just had the uh, last couple of days I've been dealing with some spiritual warfare and sitting with someone that I know who has demonic influence. But God is in control, and He has to be in control of you first before you start fighting this battle anywhere else outside of your own territory, which is your own body. Okay, in Jesus' name. We pray that you continue to log on and I'll give you the scriptures. And this, and this is a minute time to meditate whether or not God is in full control of you. That there's no open doors. There's no open things in your life where the enemy can come in. 
okay and if he has come in we want god to um to to close off all those doors of access to your life and let god take full control of you there's so many scriptures that talk about keeping your temple your your body which is a temple of god now people take it lightly that they can dib and dab a little bit with the devil and the devil won't take advantage of that if you open up the door for him to do anything he gonna come in there and try to take a lot more than you want to give and so we have to realize that we whom we whom you yield yourself to obey you become his servant we want to be the servant of the lord and let god have control of our life who you yield yourself to obey now you can't say i'm taking part in all kinds of ungodly acts and say that god is in control no because you're yielding your members to ungodly things so we got to be conscious of that man then the enemy will come in and take uh possession and this is a year i'm telling you you're gonna find a lot of people being possessed over certain things that they're doing and so we need to stop it and make a decision today i'm gonna live for christ in jesus name okay please continue to follow as i'm the lord it takes me through things i'm going to share and last night it was definitely spiritual warfare but i got out of that in that and the lord de- used to deal with me with dreams and and um de- different things like that so i just thank god because the warfare is real and the victory is in christ the victory is in christ and it's christ in us in jesus name okay be blessed and know that god loves you and continue to equip yourself with the word of god okay equip yourself with the sword of the spirit equip yourself with giving your body over to god okay in jesus name amen be blessed amen